time difference is found under the time category, and this effect is used for comparing different frames of footage. I'll drag it out onto this clip of skateboarders moving across the screen and immediately my whole frame goes pure gray. And that's because this effect is comparing the pixels of this video to itself. The target is the source, and any pixels that are identical from one frame to the next turn to 50% gray. But I can change this by using the time offset slider. This is measured in seconds. If I back it up just slightly, then we're gonna back off about a frame right there. And now we're going to see that difference in pixels between the current frame and one frame prior. And I could back that off as much as I want. So if I went back, say a second, then I'm gonna have two instances of that footage. And most of the frame is staying pure gray. The reason we're seeing slight outlines of that background is because if I turn off the effect and scrub through, you can see that the camera was not stationary. So from one second to the next second, there is a difference in pixels on that background. If this was shot on a tripod, then the entire background should be pure gray and only the subjects would have really shown up. The next property is contrast, and this is simply a contrast slider for the affected image. I could also check this box on that says absolute difference, and then instead of going to 50% gray, identical pixels will turn pure black, and that's helpful for creating mats. So you can use this effect very similarly to the difference mat effect to create a clean plate for footage like this. So let me just show you. I'll duplicate this layer. We'll call this one clean plate. I'll get rid of the time difference effect on that copy. Go to the first frame where it's just the background, right click, go to time, and say freeze frame. So now this footage doesn't play back anymore. You can actually turn that layer off, turn this one back on, and choose the target as that background layer. It's already set to that clean plate. But now because that background layer isn't showing the skateboarders, we're not seeing that duplicated frame. And the time offset doesn't make a difference since it's a frozen frame. There is nothing playing back here, so offsetting the time doesn't change anything. So I could really crank up the contrast to make this a little bit more dramatic. And then I could go to this alpha channel property and choose from one of these options. The first five are based on the actual alpha channel. So if we leave it to original, it's just going to take the fully opaque footage and shape the alpha channel based on that. I could also change it to the target. So if your target had an alpha channel, it could adopt that one instead. We could also blend the two together, change it to max, full on, meaning if there is transparency, make them all opaque. Or we could go to this category where we take the lightness of the result to shape the alpha channel or the max of the result. So if I switch it to lightness of result, then we're going to key out the background basically. Again, the camera was moving, so this background is showing through, but most of that wall has disappeared. Now you're still gonna run into issues with similarities between your subject and the background. If I turn this effect off and back on, you can see that this guy's pants are pretty similar in tone to that wall. So even if it was on a tripod, if the colors of your subject are too similar to the colors of the background, that's gonna be a problem. But you could attempt to clean that up by going into the matte category and grabbing the matte choker effect. This will allow me to choke or spread on the first pass and then choke or spread on the second pass. So basically I'm expanding my mat out to fill in some of this transparency and then I'm choking it back. So I'm able to fill in some of those holes and then get rid of the parts that I don't want. Again, this would actually work if the background wasn't moving around, if this was shot on an actual tripod. Now, I don't particularly think that using time difference is any better than using the difference matte effect. It's essentially doing the same thing, but you could take some creative liberties with this effect and create something that's just a little bit more abstract. So if I duplicated this and backed it off again, I could kind of create an interesting motion trail. Or I could use two completely different clips. If I dragged out, say, this one of a businessman dancing down some stairs and set the difference target to that clip, then we have two different clips on top of each other. Again, you could do this just with the difference blending mode, but you have the added controls here of contrast, absolute difference, and the time offset, so you can play around with that as much as you want. It could be an interesting way to create some glitches or even some transitions. But that's everything you need to know about time difference. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.